Hello and welcome to Colred Plays Raid Shadow Legends. I am Colred. Thank you for being here. We've been talking about fusions. Uh, there was an announcement that there was a new fusion coming up. Emic Trunkheart. He's going to be released probably in the next week. That event will start. Um, and so I've been getting a lot of questions from viewers about what does it take to do a fusion. So what I've decided to do is to create two guides. This first guide is going to be this video today, and that is basically going to be an explanation of all the different kinds of events and then a discussion about what you need to do to prepare for that event. So the good thing about this guide is it's going to stay relevant for a long time. So whether you're a new player or a veteran player, whether you've done a fusion before or you haven't, um, whether you're watching this video on the day it drops or six months from now, you're going to find some good information here about events about fusion events fragment events and what it takes to complete them okay so first things first how do you know that a fusion event is coming uh well the content creator program actually gives content creators a little bit of a heads up like a, a preview of future fusion champions so if you're just watching the content creator space you're going to find announcements for uh fusion champions in game, there's a little bit of a delay. So they wait a couple of days, Plarium waits a couple of days to actually make the announcement. And that will always be over here in your news tab. So you will get an announcement here that announces the new fusion champion or fragment champion. And then if you click read more, it will take you to uh, an external website that will present you with the calendar of events that you'll need to complete in order to get that fragment or fusion champion. So I've put a guide together for you about uh, fusion and fragment events. So let's jump over there and we'll get going. Okay, so this is another raid guide and this one is focused on fusion and fragment events. Um, we're explaining basically all the things that you need to know and it is a relatively complicated process um, and the differences between fusion and fragment events is also important. So uh, this is going to be a bit of a detailed guide. Be prepared. Obviously, if you want, you can bookmark this video so you can come back to it, watch it a couple of times. Uh, you're not going to master all of this right away, but I want to make sure that the information is out there. So if you have questions, you can come to this guide and get those questions answered. So first of all, you have to know that there are three types of fusion events, and they are all called fusion events because uh, historically, like when these events first dropped in the game, um, they were all classic fusions. So fragment uh, events and hybrid events came later. And because they work basically as replacements for the classic fusion, we call all three of them fusion events, even though technically fragment events are not fusion events. They are a different kind of event. The goal is the same. You're trying to acquire a champion over about a two week period. And by doing you know, various events, accomplishing various milestones in the meantime. So let's talk about a classic fusion first, because that was the original and it's sort of the most straightforward or um, at least the one that people understand the best. So in a classic fusion, players collect specific fusion rare champions by acquiring points in events and tournaments. So there will be a schedule of events and tournaments that you need to follow, and you need to get points in those events and tournaments, and the rewards will be rare champions. Now you're going to take four of those rare champions, and so groups of four rare champions, once level 40 and four star ascended, can be fused into epics. OK, so you're going to take those rares, you're going to collect them, you're going to level them up to 40, you're going to send them the four star, and then you're going to fuse four of those into an epic. Once you get all four epics, then you can take those epics. Well, you don't have to wait until you get all of them, but you're trying to get all of them and then take those epics to level 50 and ascend them to five star. Once you have all of the epics ascended at five stars and at level 50, you can then fuse those into the fusion legendary. So. The ultimate goal is typically the legendary, and this is what you're trying to do. Now, I'm going to show you what that screen basically looks like. So the last um, fusion event that we just did was a classic fusion, and this was Newt, and this was just this past month. OK, so this only uh, ended a couple of weeks ago. Now, what you'll notice is you have this fusion screen. This is within the portal. You can see the fusion tab on the on the right side over here. And so basically what you're looking at is you're looking at 16 rares that you have to collect. You have to then fuse those 16 rares into the four epics that are up here, and then you have to fuse the four epics into the legendary. OK, so that's the way a classic fusion event works. And you are collecting these champions directly from events. So they, they are rewards for events. If you miss one. You can't complete the final fusion. 
right? You need all 16 rares. You need all four uh, epics to get that legendary. Now, sometimes there's a way that you can like potentially pull maybe one of the epics directly from a shard if you get lucky, but that's not something you want to plan on. When you are planning um, your you know fusion event and you want to see, can I actually take this event on and successfully complete it? You never want to rely on luck. You want to rely on properly preparing and having the right resources. OK, so this is what the screen looks like. And this is basically what that explanation was about. 16 rare champions, four epics that gets you the uh, the legendary. OK, so let's go back here. Now we can talk about fragment fusions. Fragment fusions are a bit different. The goal is still to get a legendary champion over a two week period. You still have to do you know, 12 to 15 events, um, actually more than that, probably 16 or 17 events. But instead of being rewarded with rare or epic champions, you are rewarded with fragments of the final champion. So you collect fusion legendary fragments by acquiring points in those events and tournaments. And then a player that collects 100 champion fragments, just like any other champion collection, I'm sorry, any other fragment collection, you can summon the fusion champion at any time. And that is one of the big differences between the fragment events and the fusion events. The fusion events must be completed before the event ends. OK, so you are on a clock. However, the fragment event, once you have the, the 100 champion fragments, you can just let that champion sit there in your portal if you want, and then you can summon them later. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. All right, we're back in the game here, and we can just click on the portal. And you see you have a tab for fragment summons. OK. So I have collected 100 fragments of several champions here. It looks like I have three, four, five, six. I have six champions that are at 100 fragments. I can summon them whenever I want. I will never lose them. They will never go away. I can use them during a clan versus clan to get a lot of points for summoning uh, champions. I can use them during a champion chase event, which would get me points for that champion chase. I can summon them during any time I want, really. If I just feel like I want it, I can just click it right now and get it. So this is what a fragment event leads to. You end up getting a champion who's sitting here at 100 fragments out of 100 fragments, and you can either summon them immediately or you can wait for another opportune time. Finally, there is the hybrid fusion. Now, a hybrid fusion is basically a classic fusion mixed in with a little bit of a fragment collector. So players collect fragments in the normal way, except not for the final legendary champion. Instead, you collect fragments for typically epics. So four fragment epics can then be fused into the fusion legendary in the same way that it happens in a classic fusion event. So again, if we go to this screen, basically a hybrid fusion fragment event will look exactly like this, except these rares will be missing. OK, and in place of those rares, you will get the epics from fragments. So rather than combining uh, or fusing four rares to get an epic, you need to collect 100 fragments to get an epic. And then you still have to level up the epic to level 50, five star ascended, and get all four of them, and then combine them, fuse them into the legendary champion. So it's a bit of a, a mix, which is why they call it a hybrid, um, but it tends to be the most complicated calendar, um, at least out there, but they all happen the same way. All three types of events happen the same way. You basically have 12 to 15 days to compete in about 16 or 17 events, collect the rewards you need to complete the fusion. And remember, you will get these rare champions at three star. You'll get the epic champions at four star. So you will need potions. You will need, um, you know, potentially XP brews. You'll have to spend time leveling them up. You have to get them to, um, you know, the proper level and ascension level in order to fuse them into the next champion up. OK, so this is what a fusion event calendar looks like. Again, this was the one that just happened in July, July 3rd to July 19th. So that is a 16 day event. The shortest event I think I've ever seen was 13 days and uh, 16 days, I think, is the longest. I don't think I've ever seen one longer than 16 days. Now, what you can see here is on the left hand column here with champions. These are the champions that we need to collect. So this first row, you'll see there are four events. Each event rewards one Lone Blade Rehab. So these events give you four champions. The next group of four gives you another four champions. Same thing with the third group of four, same thing with the fourth group of four, okay? 
If you complete these 16 events and you get all the rewards, meaning you get all 16 rare champions, that's all you need. But usually, whether it's a fusion event or a fragment event, Plarium will give you like one additional sort of safety champion or safety fragment event. And in that case, this is the Ambassador Lethalin. So during the summon rush, you can see that this summon rush down here and the summon rush for Tree Shield Knot, those happen on the same dates. They are, in fact, the same event. OK, but basically what happens here is you can get Tree Shield Knot as a reward for a certain amount of points. And then for a uh, an additional number of points, you can get the Ambassador Lethalin. Usually these are fairly expensive. But if you think about it this way, one epic is worth four rares. So sometimes it is worth considering if you have the resources to go for the epic because that frees you up from doing four of the events uh, for the rares. Now, just so you know, in this particular case, you cannot skip any of the Tree Shield Knot events because you don't combine Tree Shield Knot into Ambassador Lethlin. If we look back at this, what you can see is it is the Force Affinity Champion that combines into the Ambassador, whereas the Void Champion combines into the Void Epic. OK, so what that means is if you picked up an Ambassador Lethlin, an extra one based on this summon rush, that would free you up from doing four Lone Blade Rehab events if you wanted. You could still do the events if you want the extra champions as, you know, Faction War champions or if you want extra chickens right they're all three star chickens if you don't need them um so that is certainly a possibility down at the bottom there's weirgrin sun cursed now this champion cannot be obtained from any of this fusions events or tournaments that means the only way to get this champion is to fuse that champion there is one other way with these which is you could pull him from a shard but again we don't plan on pulling uh these champions from shards we just want to win them during the events and that guarantees us the, the fusion legendary that we're going after. OK. So now, as you can see, this is a fairly complicated screen. And if you've never seen one of these before, it can be a little bit daunting, a little bit confusing. So I'm going to walk you through it a little bit. And then, you know, when we get to our next video about how to actually tackle one of these events successfully, I will go into much more depth. So. Rest assured, I will answer all of your questions, but for right now, I wanna kinda of do a basic rundown, so at least when you look at this screen, you don't feel entirely confused. Okay, so the first thing that's going on is you have a length of the event. You have the name of the event and the length of the event. So the first event here is Artifact Enhancement Event 1. Now, it starts sometime on the server day, Monday, July 3rd. Now, depending on where you are in the world, that might not be Monday for you. Okay, so. Remember that these are server days, OK? Also, we don't know what time of the server day is going to start. Is it going to start when the server resets? Is it going to start halfway through the day? Is it going to start two hours before the end of the day? We don't know, and this event calendar doesn't tell us. So while this event looks like a four-day event, July 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th, it is, in fact, not a four-day event. At best, it's a three-day event, because from July 3rd to July 4th is one day. July 4th to the 5th is a second day, and the 5th to the 6th is the third day. And then depending on what time of days those, um, that, that event starts and ends, it may be even less than three days. It might be two and a half days or two and a quarter days, okay? So the only full days that you know are going to be there are you get the entirety of July 4th, you get the entirety of July 5th, okay? So that's how you want to read this. You, it looks like it's a four day event, but you want to think of it more like a three day event. Every event that is lined up from the same day will be during that same window. But again, they can start and end at different times. So the artifact enhancement event might start at 6 a.m. and the spider tournament might start at 2 p.m. All right. They're still going to be on the same calendar day, but they're obviously going to have different start and ending times. OK. Now, you can see that there are two colors here. There are green labels and blue labels. The green labels are just the events. This, uh, the blue labels are the tournaments. And when you're in your game, obviously on the right-hand column, you can see there are tournaments on the icon at the top of the right-hand column, and then just up here. And then just below that is the events. 
Okay, so that's where you're going to uh, have to click in to get your rewards and to see your progress and so on and so forth. So as we can see, there are 16 events that we need to complete, or if we get this additional summon rush, like I said, you can potentially save on some of those. Okay, now the events that you actually get are all pretty standard, and it doesn't really matter if it's a fusion event or a fragment event, you're likely to see the same events over and over again. So now I'm going to go over those events. Okay, so here is the list of tournaments. And the most important lesson you can take away from this guide is that you need to save your resources if you are going to hope to do a fusion event or a fragment event. Now, that being said, like you could buy your way into success. If you are a spender, I would say you'd have to be at least a moderate spender, probably spending somewhere around 300 US dollars to complete a fusion if you were just like resource resource poor and you were starting from zero, probably be somewhere in the vicinity of $300. Don't quote me on that exactly. I'm a free to play player, so I don't actually spend money, but I feel like that's the number I've heard from other content creators. And so, you know, you could do your own research and figure out exactly how much it would cost you based on, you know, your level of, of account, how much you spend and where you are in the world. But it would be a lot of money to, to go after one of these fusions if you had no saved resources. And if you're a free to play player, you can entirely save enough resources to do most of the fusions in any given year. I usually shoot for somewhere between four and six fusions a year. Um, so at best, I'm doing every other one. But there are times when I may do back to back to back fusions if those champions are really good. Typically, that's rare. And usually I only have to do two in a row and then I can skip one. But that being said, you want to save your resources. So here's the thing, you have dungeon tournaments. The dungeon tournaments, if you look at this calendar, the dungeon tournaments, there's a spider tournament, a dragon tournament, ice golem tournament, and a fire knight tournament. That will always be true for every fusion or fragment event. You will get one tournament of each dungeon. Now, I think I've seen events where there are two tournaments from different dungeons. So you might have two spider tournaments, but you will always get one from every dungeon, and then you may get additional ones. Now, for dungeon tournaments, all you need are ener energy and potentially gems. So typically, in order to get the reward that you need, you're going to need a minimum of 2,000 energy. Now, this depends on what level you are and what level of the dungeon you can complete. So if you are completing level 20 of the dungeon, that tends to be the most efficient place to farm. We'll go over that in the next guide um, in more depth. But at level 20, you need about 2,000 energy, sort of as a minimum. You may need more. You may need, you know, 22, 2300, but typically you can get it in about 2,000 energy. And if you get lucky with drops, you can maybe even get it in like 18 or 1900 energy. But to be safe, what I would say is you want 2,000 energy per tournament. Okay. Now remember, you're not going to save 8,000 energy or 10,000 energy. You can't save that much. However, you do want to save as much as you can, you're going to save your energy refills, you're going to save uh, the flat energy like that sits in your um, in your mailbox, you know, from from like tournaments and stuff that you get. So any I'll, I'll show you. Let's do that instead. Let's actually show it. Here we are back in the base and in the upper right hand corner. I have my little chest of, you know, wonders. And this is our mailbox. And so if you just go up here to the tab, you can go down to gems, silver and potions. You can see what you have there. Or you can go to shop and you'll get this stuff. So sometimes you're going to have to look at both. Right now, I don't really have any gems, silver, or potions, but I do have tons of shop stuff. Now, remember, every other day, um, just as like a free reward for logging in, you're going to get a pack that contains a free refill. Okay, so you always want to save those. Never use them. You get 99 days. Never use them until there's a reason to use them. You can see I'm over the max energy as it is. So if I were just popping these potions, I would be at like 5,000 energy and that doesn't serve me well at all. I would rather be at zero energy and be getting the free energy that passively refills over time. But right now I just have gotten so many rewards recently that I can't get back down below 130. I will probably before the fusion event make that happen because I don't want to be saving a huge batch of energy before the fusion event. You could, though. That is a strategy that some people use. They start uh, pushing this max number up higher and higher in the days before a fusion so that when they start uh, the fusion event, 
maybe for that first spider tournament, that first dragon tournament, they already have their 2,000 or 2,500 energy they need to complete that event. So there are different strategies for it. Again, I'll go over that in my next guide. But for right now, what you should know here is you want to save as many of these refillable potions as you can. And also, if you ever get a flat reward that goes into your inbox, so for instance, like in the daily rewards, tomorrow I'll get 300 energy. I'm not sure. I think that one just goes into my energy pool. But if you got an, a reward like this, 300 energy, 500 energy, you know, whatever it is, 100 energy, if it goes into your mailbox, let it stay there until it gets either low on its timer, like two days. You can see some of my potions had two days or you have a reason to use up that energy like a fusion event. OK, so dungeon tournaments basically require energies. The gems there on that list I put there in case you run out of energy and you need to buy energy refills. We buy energy refills with gems. I think they're 40 each. I want to say they're 40. They're either 30 or 40 each. And so you can get more energy that way. Now, there's another type of event, which is the Dungeon Divers event, and this also requires just energy and gems. Usually this requires more energy than a single tournament does. So about 3000 energy minimum. But here what you want to do is you want to double dip to save on energy. So again, if we look at the calendar, what we can see is the Dungeon Divers event here started on July 4th and went through the 7th and the Spider Tournament went from the 3rd to the 6th. So for at least Wednesday, July 5th, these two events we're in full swing simultaneously for the entire 24 hours. So that's a day you probably want to drop all of your energy into the spider tournament because Dungeon Divers basically rewards you for getting artifacts. And since you're getting artifacts from the spider tournament by doing it, you're double dipping. You're getting twice the value for the energy that you're spending. Now we have champion training events. Champion training events are basically what you've seen, you know, whenever these these events all pop on a regular rotation. Um, even when there aren't fusions. So you've probably seen all of these events. Um, it's just a matter of like, what do you need to save to do them in the condensed time frame that happens during a fusion or fragment event? So champion training can take energy, it can take gems, it can take XP brews. You can, you, you're going to need food champions or you're going to need chi chickens or both. But basically you need enough energy, brews and food champs to make at least two six star champions. It will probably take more than that to complete a champion training. I think it's about two and a half six stars. And again, you don't necessarily need to create the six stars, but you need to create the like XP chain that gets there. So you need to turn, you know, take two stars up to level 20, um, then convert them into three stars, take those up to level 30, convert them into four stars, so on and so forth. You can obviously use rares, you can use epics, you can use, you know, uncommons, you can even use commons if you want. Every choice will change the number of uh, champions you need to level up and how far you need to take them but in general what you want here is you want enough energies brew energy brews and food champs to make at least two six stars per event so if there are two champion trainings or three champion trainings you're going to need to do that multiple times this is usually easier if you save for it and level up champions in advance and then don't promote them so usually uh, we'll talk about this more at the end, but I'm sitting on a bunch of like level 33 stars that are just waiting to be promoted. And then I promote them during a champion training event in a fusion event. OK, the next type of event is the artifact enhancement event. Um, there has been significant inflation on these events. It used to be about 15 million per event, uh, and now it's more like 20 million per event. And in the last couple of fusions, there were three artifact enhancement events. So if we look at the last event, you can see artifact enhancement on the first day, artifact enhancement two started on July 7th, went to the 10th, and then down here at the bottom from the 11th to the 14th was artifact enhancement event three. That means, means you needed 60 million silver to complete uh, the newt fusion here. That's a lot of silver. Now, before you freak out, before you're like, there's no way I can possibly save that much, you don't have to save that much, okay? This is just how much you're going to need. Remember, as you do the dungeon tournaments, as you do spider tournament, fire knight tournament, dragon tournament, you are getting silver from those runs, plus you're getting artifacts that you can sell. You may uh, level up those artifacts during artifact enhancement and then sell them off to mitigate the cost of enhancing them. But usually what I want to do is I want to have about half my silver saved before I start a fusion and the other half I can get during the fusion. 
Um, you can also use your um, your forge in your base to uh, you know make cheap artifacts there and sell them off if you need extra cash. Um, you can also do a gear cleanse if you have a lot of stuff in your vault that you're not using. You can sell that for extra cash. But this is one of the more difficult resources to acquire. And so it really helps to save as much as you can beforehand. If you look at my account right now, I've got 30 million in silver saved, and I probably still have about five days before the fusion event starts, maybe six. So I can probably get to like 40 million fairly easily. And then I've got a bunch of stuff that I can forge to sell for more silver. Plus, I'm going to be getting silver during those dungeon tournaments like I was talking about. So I should be OK on silver. But I would say you probably want at least 20 million silver saved before, you know, trying an event. If you don't have at least 20 million, you're going to be in trouble. Arena Takedown. Arena Takedown um, is just basically a classic arena event where you have to defeat enemies. And the more, you know, you win, the more points you get. If you are a regular arena player, this is probably going to be the easiest event in the entire fusion. OK, so all you have to do is use your regular tokens that you get every day. Remember, you get one per hour, so that's potentially up to 24 a day. Plus, you get a 10 pack for free and a five pack for free from your quests and advanced quests. So that's as many as 39 tokens per day. Plus, if you need it, you can also spend gems to get additional arena tokens. But what I found is just by doing my regular arena battles per day, I usually try to get in about 25. I, I get more than enough points to uh, complete the arena takedown. So if you're not an arena player, if you don't play arena very often, you're going to want to start to pick up your game in advance of a fusion event. Get your team kitted out. You know, if you need to upgrade uh, gear, if you need to swap champions out, figure out, you know, your one or two uh, teams that you need and then make sure during the event that you're focused on arenas. Now, you don't have to do it for the entirety of the fusion event. You only have to do it when the arena takedown event is is going on. So that's just typically three days. But during those three days, you really have to prioritize the arena. And you have to remember that you need extra time for that if you're not an arena player, because you still have to do all the other things that you're trying to do, as well as adding arena to your schedule. All right. The next two events are the shard events, and these are by far the most resource intensive events in a fusion or fragment event okay now you can't shortcut this if you don't have these resources you cannot do the fusion okay everything else can there are like little tricks that you can do there are little methods you can do to get more energy to you know you can you can buy it with gems or maybe you can uh, get more silver by you know forging a lot and and selling or you know if you don't have the brews for champion training you can just grind it out for eight hours a day and get all the uh, XP that you need from, you know, running campaign, whatever it happens to be. All of those are resources that you can continue to get during the overall fusion or fragment event. But you're not going to get many shards during the event. You will get two weeks worth of shards. But remember, the schedule is chosen for you. And what I mean by that is in this particular calendar, the summon rush started on the fifth day of the event. So it went from July 7th to July 10th, and then it was done. So if you didn't have enough shards when this event started, you were probably in trouble because you only had two extra days to pick up extra shards. OK, likewise, if you you know waited for the um, champion chase tournament, which was the last event, you know, and you already used up all your shards on Sunrush, you might not have had enough shards to get the champion chase. And this was the last event on the calendar. This was the latest event. This went all the way to the 17th. So it is potentially possible that some people out there completed 15 of the 16 events and then failed on the champion chase tournament. OK, because there's really no way unless you're going to spend money to get additional shards. OK. And this is where the money thing comes in. This is, these are the two events that are really the money grabbers. This is where, you know, people start buying packs because they don't want that to happen. They'll get to the 17th and they're like, holy cow, I'm three sacred shards short. I'm just going to spend 20 bucks and get some sacred shards. So now the question becomes, how many shards do you need? Now, if you've watched my other videos, especially the ones that recently happened, because we just had a two times void chart event, you'll know that as a free to play player, I highly recommend that you never spend void shards 
outside of a two times void shard event. That means I never spend void shards during a fusion event. You can, and if you need to, you can decide to, that's up to you. But basically what this guide is showing, how many sacreds and ancient shards you need, I don't go into void shards at all because I think it's a bad time to spend void shards. All right, so how many shards do you need? So for summon rush, you basically you get points for opening shards. That's it. And in order to complete the summon rush of the last event, you needed five sacreds and 50 ancients. You also could have done it with six sacreds. Um, or you could have done it with, I guess, 300 ancients. So, um, you know, you can have a mix and match of different shards, or you can go all in on whichever shard you have the most of, whatever it is that you want, okay? But then in addition to the summon rush, remember you also have the champion chase. Now the champion chase is a little bit friendlier than the summon rush. Summon rush requires shards and there is no getting around it. You have to pull shards. But for champion chase, you just have to collect champions. And you get champions as rewards from campaign. You get champions from login rewards. You get champions from Doom Tower uh, if you collect fragments. So you can use shards here. You can use fragment summons. You can even buy shards with gems, right? And you can also uh, do it through energy or some of it through energy by just farming campaign a lot and getting two star and three star champion drops through campaign now you would have to run a whole lot of campaign to complete an entire champion chase so probably you're still going to have to pull some shards but the number of shards that i've listed here is sort of the maximum that you're likely to need so it'd be 10 sacreds or 100 ancients plus a couple of fusions or or what i mean by that is um if we look at this if the event is happening say during a time where you have collected some of these champions fusing them is the same as like getting champions. So if you take four of these rares and fuse it into an epic, you've now collected that epic champion and you're going to get the points for the champion chase for getting an epic. If you got the void epic, you would get the points for a void epic. So a lot of times, if you know that there is a champion chase late in the fusion or fragment event, then you want, well, it would have to be a fusion event or a hybrid event. You can't do it uh, in a fragment event, right? Um, then you can go ahead and fuse the champions that, that you've collected during that event to get more points. Finally, you can also use fragment summons. So if we go back to our game and we go back to our portal, this is where all of these champions that I've saved up are going to come in handy. I can literally pull four legendaries during the next fusion, and that's guaranteed because they're fragments. And I'm going to get the points for those four legendaries if I use them all up. And so that's going to save me a whole lot of shards. So if you ever get a fragment champion, you typically want to hold on to it either for a clan versus clan or for a fusion event, because those are the two places where pulling this champion is going to be the most valuable. Now, if you have just a stellar champion, uh, you know, fragment champion that you want to pull right away, go ahead and pull. Like you don't necessarily have to save every champion. But I always uh, recommend having a few champions in this queue so that you can pull them during a champion chase event, uh, during a fusion event, because that's really the best way to save yourself shards. And as a free to play player, you're always trying to save as many shards as possible. OK, so what do the totals look like? Well, if we go down to the red line at the bottom, the totals to save, this is just my personal preference. You could probably get away with saving a little bit less than I do. And you can certainly save more than I do if you want to, you know, be very sure that you're going to complete a, a fusion. But I find that this amount of savings uh, is working for me right now. There has been inflation over the last few events. So these numbers are actually higher than they used to be, and they may continue to grow. So if you're watching this video six months or a year from the time I recorded it, um, these numbers may not be enough anymore. You may have to save more. But for right now, uh, we're looking at 40 plus energy refills. Now, if you noticed, I don't actually have 40 plus energy refills saved. I probably have about 20 right now, maybe 15. Um, I will save a few more before this fusion drops, this next fusion drops, but I can always use gems in place of energy refills. So as far as gems are concerned, I usually feel the most comfortable with at least 2000 gems, preferably 2500 gems. But I right now have about 14,000 gems, and that's going to alleviate a lot of problems with energy refills. I don't need that energy if I have gems.
Okay, in addition, you're going to want about 200 XP brews in each affinity. I feel more comfortable with like 300 brews in each affinity, but typically I can get through an entire fusion event with a, a champion training. Probably if I do two champion trainings with about 180 brews, um, if I've done enough prep work. Okay. Uh, then you're going to need nine to 12 sacred shards. If you look here, you could say you could use as many as 15 sh sacred shards, but I'm always trying to get away with fewer. So if I have fragment summons to use, that's going to save me a couple of sacred shards. If I have ancient shards to use, that's going to save me a couple of sacred shards. And I typically would rather use ancient shards than sacred shards, even at a 10 to 1 ratio, simply because it tends to be easier to collect ancient shards. Two to three fragment summons at a minimum. I usually feel better with like five or six in my queue, but sometimes you don't have that many in your queue. Maybe you're earlier in the game and you haven't actually completed a lot of Doom Tower, um, so you might not even have any fragment summons. If that's the case, if you don't have any fragment summons, you need to be at the higher end of the shard count here. Okay, so you're going to be, need to be like 10 plus sacreds and probably like 70, 80, 90 ancients if you have no fragment summons. Then in addition, I already mentioned this, I would say, you know, 20 is an absolute min minimum on silver, um, but I would say 30 to 40 is much more comfortable. In addition, I usually like to carry about 30 or 40 leveled up champs, and that's a mix of 20s, so two stars who are level 20, three stars who are level 30, and four stars who are level 40. I don't carry any five star champions typically, but if you had a couple, that could also help. But obviously, you don't need to level those up yet. You want to wait for the champion training event to put points on those. So usually 30 to 40 level champs. And then usually I'm actually going to have 40 to 60 food champs. And again, this is a mix of two star, three star and four star. I don't count one stars. And I also don't worry about five stars. OK, so typically I'm worried about two stars, three stars and four stars. So what we're looking here is probably somewhere in the vicinity of 70 to 100 champions in my roster that are just there to be consumed during the, the champion training events. And remember, you're typically going to get two of those. So that's why we have so many. Now, you will have a summon rush and a champion chase at some point. So depending on the calendar that you're dealing with, you may have already pulled like a whole bunch of ancients during the summon rush before you have to do a champion training event. And that would alleviate some of the burden here. But generally what happens is when I pull uh, during two times ancient shard events, and let's say I pull 80 shards, I pretty much keep all of those in my vault just waiting for the next event and I'll level some of them up slowly. I'll put them in the, the sparring pit to like get passive levels or, you know, I'll spend some energy every day just doing campaign and I'll be leveling those up slowly so I can have my 30 to 40 level champ and the champs and then the rest are just basically chickens. In addition to food champions, you can have real chickens, the, the ones that actually look like chickens and are kind of wild cards. I usually am looking for 40 to 60 chickens of a mix of three and four star and maybe even a few five star. Now, I'm not going to show you how many chickens I actually have on my account because it's kind of absurd, but I have hundreds of chickens. So this isn't something that I need to worry about too much, except for five star chickens. I don't have that many five star chickens because those go pretty quickly and they come in pretty slowly. Um, but I have a ton of three star chickens and four star chickens, more than I'd probably ever use in a single fusion event. I could probably do four events with the number of chickens that I have. OK, so those are the totals to save. Again, you can decide if you're a low spender or a mid spender or a big spender, you can decide whether or not you need to save these resources because you can always buy energy. You can always buy shards. You can always do that and you can decide how much you want to spend. But these are sort of the baselines that you're going to need to start an event. And then remember, you're going to continue to gain resources over the course of the two week event. And so those in combination should get you over the line. If you're not sure about that, you need to do some calculations. You need to sit with the calendar when it pops and start thinking about, do I have the resources I need? Do I need to spend some money or do I need to skip this event? OK, and that's where we get to this question. Can I go for it? So the first question that we always ask when we get a new fusion or fragment champion like announcement, we know that one's coming is everybody does an assessment of that champion. We look at the kit, you know, we try to decide, is this a good champion? Is this going to be used in different places? Do I need what it's used for? And so, you know, the, the first question is really like, is it good enough to go for? But if you can't complete it, then it doesn't matter how good it is. If you're throwing resources at a champion you're never going to acquire, you are basically wasting those resources because in a month there's going to be another fusion champion and maybe if you saved you'd have a chance to get that one um so 
you definitely don't want to just go for every single fusion. You always want to save and then pick your spots. Okay, like I said, I typically go for somewhere between four and six a year. And that feels really comfortable for me because there's more than just the resources. And this is where we get to ask these questions. So the first question is, have I saved enough resources? If the answer is no, you can't go for it. The second one is, is my calendar clear for the next 12 to 15 days? And we just saw this is actually, this can actually be even 16 or 17 days potentially. So is my calendar clear? Is my real world calendar clear? Do I have a big business meeting? Do I have a big, you know, paper due at school? Um, is there a wedding I have to go to? Are we going on vacation? Whatever it happens to be, if you are not going to be able to sit at your phone or computer or tablet for this entire time and complete every event, remember, if you miss one event, you're done. That means you have to focus on this event for the two weeks that it's up. So if you can't do this, it doesn't matter if you have the resources or not, because you're going to fail an event somewhere and that's just going to feel bad. So is my calendar clear for the next 12 to 15 days or 16 days? Um, that's a really important question to ask. The third question is, do I have the energy or focus to complete every event I need? And this is actually a really big question and one you should consider. I would say on the daily during a fusion or fragment event, I'm typically spending five to six hours grinding in rain, right? Now I'm trying to do all my daily quests, all my advanced quests. I'm trying to do my arena stuff. I'm trying to do my clan boss. I'm trying to do all the stuff that I normally do. Plus, I typically have at least two events going on simultaneously for the fusion event. Let's go look at that calendar one more time. Pick Wednesday, July 5th. Artifact enhancement event going, spider tournament going, dungeon divers going, champion training event going. So during Wednesday, July 5th, you've got four events going, all of which you probably need to pay some attention to. Plus, you want to do everything else that you do in raid during the day to make sure you're getting your daily rewards. You don't want to drop clan boss because you want those shards for the shard event. You don't want to drop your um, daily quest because that gives you more energies to complete the tournaments. So you need to do everything that you normally do. Plus, you've got four events going on this day. Now, some days are a little bit less busy. So, for instance, you can pick July 11th here and you can see there are really probably only two tournaments going on. And maybe like uh, an artifact enhancement event is picking up or the Dungeon Divers event was ending. But really, you're only focused on these two. So some days are easier than other days, but there will be days where you have four or five events and tournaments going on. And that's just a lot to focus on. And again, remember, if you miss one, you're done. OK, so these are the questions to ask yourself. By the way, when I ask question number three, if I am sick, if I am stressed out, if I've got, you know, other things in my life I need to worry about, whether it's. Um, you know, things I need to do with my wife, things around the house, you know, there's social events that are going on. And I know, for instance, there are several days where I'm going to be away from my computer or phone for four or five hours at a stretch. This is when I say no based on this question. OK, and in general, if I answer no or I'm not sure to even one question, I start consider considering the idea of skipping the fusion. I don't want to throw away resources. These resources can be utilized in other places more effectively than just throwing them into a fusion I can't complete. I have failed at least three fusions that I can think of, maybe four total, and every one of them hurt. The ones that hurt the least are when I failed on like the third or fourth day and I knew it and I just stopped. But the ones that really hurt were when I got all the way to the last day and missed. That's awful. That is horrible because you don't get those resources back and now you haven't gotten the value out of them. There is one other thing to remember that during fusion events and hybrid events, you can sometimes get rares and epics that may be nice consolation prizes. So, for instance, during the uh, new fusion, you could have potentially said, you know what, I'm going to be able to get this void epic or I'm going to be able to get this force epic, right? Force affinity epic. So maybe the epics just doing half of the event or doing a third of the event. Maybe that's enough. Maybe even picking up a couple of these rares is enough. You can use them as chickens. You can throw them into faction crypts. You can do other things with them. Maybe they're worth building. I actually think tree, tree Shield Knot here is a very good rare. So if you're early on, he might be worth like a five star, maybe even six star for you. So if you are a newer player who can't get all the way through the fusion, or if you are just resource poor at the moment, or you don't have the time or energy to do the entire event, 
it's still a decent time to get some things done, right? It's always great to train up some champions during a champion training event. It's always great to get additional re rewards for the things you're already doing. So if there's a dragon tournament up and you're like, I really need to f farm speed gear, go ahead and do the dragon tournament. You're going to get some points. You're going to get some extra rewards and you're going to get that speed gear that you're looking for. There are consolation rewards in not doing a complete fusion. But again, what you don't want to do is go out and get 15 of these champions and then be stuck with no way to get the 16th. That feels really bad, and it's a real waste of your resources. So that is basically it for this guide. I hope you found this helpful. I don't want to scare anybody off of fusions. What I would say generally is I, I started fusions when I was about six months into the game. I, I messed up my first fusion. That's pretty common. A lot of players mess up their first fusion. Uh, so it wasn't until my second attempt um, that I actually completed a fusion and there was a gap of about a month in between. So I skipped, I, I failed a fusion, I skipped a fusion and I completed a fusion. So at that point I was about eight or nine months into the game when I completed my first fusion. Now you can be better than me. You can definitely be better than me. So if you've been preparing for this fusion already and you're in a good place and you're only four months into the game, there is no reason that you couldn't complete the fusion at, you know, the four month mark. There are definitely players I know out there who do that. But what I would say is as a free to play player, don't feel like you have to rush, right? It's better to just get in the habit of saving and then picking your spots. This fusion is worth it and I have the resources and I have the energy and I'm not going to be interrupted. And then you go for it. Or, no, nope, I'm not sure I can be here for 12 to 15 calendar days. So right now I'm going to skip this fusion and then maybe next month I'll have more resources and it'll be even easier and I'll have the time to actually sit down and play the game. Okay, that is it for me for today. I know there was a lot of information here. Like I said, probably your best bet is to go ahead and bookmark this video, come back and watch the parts that feel relevant as you're progressing towards your first fusion or towards the next fusion that you want to attempt and maybe the first successful fusion that you're hoping to complete. But yeah, this guide, like I said, should be relevant for a long time, and it shouldn't matter which type of fusion event is coming down the pike, whether it is a classic fusion, a fragment event or a hybrid event, um, this guide and the information in it will stay relevant for all of those. Okay, so thanks so much for hanging out. If you have any questions about fusion events, uh, definitely put them in the comments below. And also tell me the stories of your first successful fusion event. I love to hear those kinds of stories. How many tries did it take you? Did you just knock it out of the park with the first one? What was the champion that you did, decided to go for? And if you failed a couple of fusions, it's okay to commiserate with those too. I think I showed in the, a video the other day, I got 95 fragments during a fragment uh, fusion and that hurt really bad. So um, definitely, you know, share those stories as well, because when you share those stories and you get commiseration from other players who've gone through the same thing, Raid doesn't feel so bad. It doesn't feel quite so lonely or quite so harsh when you know that other people are in the same boat as you. Okay, so I hope to uh, see those comments. I'll definitely respond to them. I enjoy responding to the comments. And also look out for that next guide that's coming out. One last thing, I forgot to mention, my editor's gonna be mad at me, but we have launched our Discord finally. So our community Discord is up, it's live. You can find the link in the description of this video. You can also find the link in the about section on my YouTube page. So please join the Discord, come and hang out, have a conversation. Um, I'm hoping to grow a community here. So if you've been enjoying the videos, I'd love to have you in my Discord. Thanks so much for hanging out. I've been Colred. I will see you in another video soon.